Hello, and in this video, I'm going to talk about um, 10 classic ZX Spectrum games that were sequels. Now, um, quick disclaimer coming up. These, uh, this video is based purely on games that I've played. I've never played a Dizzy game, so there are no Dizzy games in this list, and it's in no particular order. So first, we've got Jet Set Willy, obviously the follow-up to Manic Miner, um, classic uh, platforming action from Matthew Smith Software Projects 1984. Um, never managed to complete it, never managed to get very far, and it's got some of the best uh, level names uh, in history. We Must Perform a Quirk of League is my uh, favourite, but also some evil level design. I'm sure uh, people will remember the Banyan Tree. Um, bastard level that one is. Anyway, um, Jet Set Willy, yeah, um, classic game. And the sequel. So we're going to move on in just a second to one that I think everyone got with their uh, ZX Spectrum packs when they first got them in the Sinclair 6 pack. Horace Go Skiing, follow up to Hungry Horace by Beam Software, published by Sinclair Research. Fun little game, um, sort of frogger, sort of uh, bit at the start where you've got to collect your skis and then take to the slopes and try not to hurtle headlong into a tree which I do quite often in this game, as you can see. Um, it was followed by Horace and the Spiders. I'm not sure if there are any more Horace games, but um, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a classic. Um, quite playable, gets trickier and trickier. Um, still worth a blast every now and then to this day. So we move on to the next game in the list, which is going to be Back to School from Microsphere in, I think this was 1985. Now, Back at School Days is one of my favourite games ever. Um, it's fantastic, so playable, just wandering around, uh, messing about, beating people up, writing rude words on blackboards, renaming the teachers, um, giving them rude names. Now, Back to School took all of that and expanded it to uh, include a playing field and a girls school as well that you could uh, create mayhem in. Absolutely brilliant game. Um, it was, I think, going to be followed, if I remember rightly, from it, an article in Retro Gamer by a third game, a kind of uh, sports day, Daily Thompson to Catalog type game, but it never came to light. Shame, because, you know, I think that could have been uh, something quite special. But uh, yeah, it's, um, it's a great game. So we'll just let this uh, little bit play out and you can see me getting lines and and whatnot. I was never much good at school days or back to school. Um, I never really tried that hard to play the game itself. I just used to like wandering about and just being a twit. Um, much like when I was at school myself, actually, really. So um, art imitates life in that respect. Wonderful game. If you are one of the three people in the universe who haven't played either of School Days or Back to School, then please go and check them out. They are utterly fantastic games. You can lose hours in them. So the next cracking sequel is IK Plus from System 3, published by Activision. And International Karate was an okay game, I suppose. Um, but IK Plus, just, you know, adding the third fighter mechanic to it, it just makes for such a playable game. It's brilliant, especially with a, a, with um, other players playing with your mates. Now, Fist Plus, uh, Way the Exploding Fist 3, if you like, tried to take this mechanic as well and cocked it up. But um, never mind, IK Plus rules. Now, not only is this one of the best sequels ever, it's also, in my opinion, one of the best games um, for the Spectrum. Um, Target Renegade, a sort of standalone home, cons uh, home computer only sequel to the arcade game Renegade. And the Spectrum version of that game is pretty uh, brilliant, but um, Target Renegade is just a fantastic game. Again, it can be played two player, and that's where a lot of it's. Um, uh, brilliance comes from uh, you can see you know you can pick up weapons in this game you can sort of twat people with wanton abandon um, should you so wish to in fact you have to really it's the aim of the game you can't really just walk up to them and speak harshly at them but a great great game um, especially in two-player mode so much fun it is kind of hamstrung by the fact that its own sequel Renegade 3 
is completely fucking awful. And there's no other way to describe Renegade 3. Um, in fact, let's erase it from our memories. Okay, so moving on from Target Renegade, we come to Action Force 2. Now, I didn't like um, the first Action Force game at all, really. I thought it was a bit mediocre, but Action Force 2 is, is fantastic. It's, it's brilliant. So much fun to play. And you control um, the crosshair as opposed to the guy climbing up the ladder there. Your job is like you kind of like sniper support, I suppose. And you've got to make sure that uh, none of the baddies on the screen can get to him and that he can get to his ultimate goal, which is to free the hostages at the top of the level. Now, it's a really, really playable game. Again, I'm going to beseech you to check this one out because it's uh, really good fun. So, the next game is the classic Night Law, which was a follow-up to Sable Wolf, even though I think, if I'm recalling this rightly, it was actually completed before um, Sable Wolf. Now, back in the day, I loved this game. I still own my own copy of it that I bought back in 1984, and I loved it. But I have to say that playing it now... I don't. I actually find it a pain in the ass. I actually find it a massive pain in the ass. Um, I can see why it is a classic. I can see why I liked it. Perhaps I had much more patience back then. But now I just find it um, quite sort of tedious to play, really. But I can recognise the place that it has in um, sort of Spectrum gaming history. Um, nothing had been seen uh, like it. And of course it opened up um, a number of... Uh, clones in the genre uh, from its own sequels such as pentagram and other ultimate play the game games gun fright nightshade um, and it was bettered by uh, other programmers with games such as uh, head over heels batman um, i always quite enjoyed nosferatu the vampire um, La Abadia del Crimen is supposed to be brilliant, but I've never played that. I'm going to get round to playing that eventually one day. But Night Law, it's been, uh, I didn't really enjoy um, playing it again. Um, shame. Match Day 2, I've featured this a few times. Um, this alongside Emlyn Hughes International Soccer is a two-way sort of race for which one is the best uh, football game on the spectrum I happen to think it's this one um, although Emlyn Hughes is uh, a great game um, but this to me is just a bit more instantly playable um, Emlyn Hughes is a bit more fiddly to get the hang of but still a great game so I make no apologies for including a homebrew game in this one Dreamwalker Alter Ego 2 from Retro Souls. Now I've banged on about Retro Souls in various videos. This is another outstanding game. So much fun. And it gets you really, really thinking. Um, it's got great music, great level design, etc. I've played this sort of incessantly really. I keep coming back to it. The character swapping mechanic is fantastic. And finally, Rainbow Islands. Now up until about a week ago, I'd never played this, which is really, really strange, bearing in mind Bubble Bobble is one of my favourite Spectrum games. Um, so I thought, I really, as soon as I was doing a, a video about best sequels, check this one out and see if it is one of the best sequels. And you know what? It's bloody fantastic. I still prefer Bubble Bobble. I think it's a bit more instantly playable, but deserving of its place in this video. Anyway, that's the lot. Thanks ever so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please let me know if you have. Take care of yourself and goodbye.